This is the fireball setup I created last time. I found that I missed the flag here. This flag makes the input easier. Do the same on player 2 side. This time I will go through the other two special moves. The first one is Shoryuken, known as Dragon Punch, shortened by DP. The input command setup is almost the same as Fireball. But this is the one that always got stuck in every version. This is the input of DP. The problem is the input conflict with Dash, and Fireball. If you finish the move with a forward, it will trigger DP and Fireball at the same time. So there is some control shutdown work involved. We already have a fireball set up here. Just copy it. Update the DP input command. Forward first. Then down. And then connect down forward here. Connect heavy punch and light punch. It's not supposed to be input in mid-air, so multiply the high check here. Same as fireball. Connect the timer node onto wormhole F, which shuts down all the controls during special moves. Change the heavy punch timer to 1.4. Change the light punch timer to 0.8. For the input command timer, change it to 0.4. This helps the input become easier for DP. Let's change the person input with a wormhole, make the script easier to work with. I use wormhole K for the action input and swap all these inputs to wormhole K. Wormhole J for jump. Okay, back to DP setup. Go to the map. This map is for action. Set output range 0 to 2. For DP, I use the celebrate animation with a jump. Connect this map to wormhole K. Timer connects to wormhole J. Let's take a look. The motion is strange right? This is as I said before, it conflicts with the dash, and fireball command. To fix this, I shut down other commands when the dp command is successful. Right after down forward is finished, connect to a not no down. Multiply the last command of the fireball, which is forward. In the dash setup, multiply this nut node on right after the flag. Go back to the gameplay and see.
DP already fixed. We don't need this trigger from zero, remove it. But we need the one on light punch. Connect it to wormhole J. Check out how the light punch DP works. Cool. Heavy punch has a big jump, light punch has a small jump now. Let's add damage to it. Connect the map node onto timer. The special move is counted by hits, so I won't go too high on the damage. For heavy punch, I set output range 0 to 16. I set the light punch output range 0 to 10. Damage assigned, then make a hitbox for it. I use a wormhole G for the DP active signal. Connect to timer. On the hitbox side, I connect exit G to teleport H, which is a vertical hitbox. We don't have to connect teleport G, it's because that will create hits damage. You will understand what I'm saying during the gameplay. so you can see the hitbox going in and out during DP. That's because when a normal move is not processed the teleport G will send the hitbox back to its origin. And this setup created damage count by hits. I think the hitbox is too small, change the size to get a better cover. And this won't affect too much on the normal moves. Okay, the whole DP setup is done. Move on to the third special move now, Tatsumaki. Forget about the name, let's call it Tornado Kick. The setup is the same as before. So we can just copy the setup. Remove some unnecessary nodon. And connect the inputs. Down for the first input down backward for the second input, also connect to the switch side setup instead. The last one is backward. Connect the input button to heavy kick and light kick. Remove the multiply before the timer, because we allow it to perform in mid-air. Connect the timer to wormhole F, so all the buttons will shut down. I used turn animation for this one, so change the map output value to 5. Connect to wormhole K. Set the timer of the heavy kick to 0.3. The timer of the light kick to 0.75. That's because I let the heavy kick with shorter travel distance but higher damage. The light kick one with longer distance but lower damage. Create a wormhole I for the left and right input. And reconnect all the existing inputs to this wormhole. Let's take a look. We have a turn animation, but missing the forward motion. Let's make this. Since we are concerned about the switch side, so pull out my favorite wormhole L first. Connect to a map. Inside the map, check the reverse. Multiply this map to the timer.
and connect to the wormhole eye. So the movement will swap between positive and negative for the switch sides. Great! We are done with the animation. We need a horizontal hitbox for this one. So connect to wormhole H. Connect the exit H to teleport F. The last step, set up a damage value. This move also counts by the hits, so I won't set it too high. The light kick especially has a longer duration. Heavy kick is 12. Light kick is 3. Check this out. We are done with the tornado kick. Let me organize the space a little bit, then copy this whole setup to player 2. Connect all the proper inputs on player 2. Don't forget DP needs to shut down other moves. This wormhole G is for the hitbox. I changed it to wormhole M for player 2. Do the same for the hitbox. I created those wormholes for player 2 person Nodan's inputs. As for the action. R for the jump.
connect the DP damage. Do the same on Tornado Kick. Connect the proper inputs. Create a wormhole queue for player 2's left and right input. For the Tornado Kick hitbox, I use Wormhole N. Connect the damage. Don't forget to connect all these timers to wormhole E to disable all the buttons during special moves. And also we increase the size of hitbox on player 1, do the same on player 2 as well. Okay, we have all the special moves now. And I uploaded my file this time for part 6. You can find it here or under my programmer ID. If I have a new file, I will delete this one and upload the latest one. So you better check under my programmer ID instead if you find the game ID doesn't work anymore. The next video will go through my super setup and animation. Do I need to go through round timer setup? Let me know in the comment. Otherwise I will skip that.